Hi! This isn't my typical kind of demo video. This is going to be a video on how to use a tempo chart to increase your tempo for pieces that you have already done level one, which is letter names, finger numbers, and rhythms. So this is the second step in learning how to build the tempo for something that you have already learned the basics for. So what I like to do is I create this tempo goal chart for my students. And you can see a familiar little cartoon character here. We're going to use Lightning McQueen here, taking him off. And okay, that didn't work out very well, but <laughs> um, he's got some blue tack there to him. Um, what we can do is take Lightning McQueen and we're going to move him up and down this chart. Well, hopefully just up. So what we're going to do to fill in these little spots here is we're going to figure out with the piece that we're working on, what is the best tempo to take to start? And the best tempo is the slowest tempo that you can successfully play the piece with relatively no mistakes, if possible. Okay, so I'm going to use this piece called Pizzicato in D. And it comes from Alfred's basic piano library solo book level F. So I'm going to use that as a demo. And right now I have a student who's doing very well with this piece, but is having difficulty in building the tempo. So I'm going to use this as a demo piece. We can use any piece you want. The most important tool is to have the chart. Yeah, to write down what our tempos are and to use either a metronome or a built-in metronome if you have one in your keyboard. I've got one in my keyboard. You hear a ding and a click, 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 okay? So if you don't know how to set your built-in keyboard metronome, then use an external one. Now, it's not just about using something that looks like this as a dedicated metronome. There's all kinds of apps that you can download on your mobile phone. Any mobile device will have uh, different apps, free apps that you can use. Um, so I can show those to you in another video. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna figure out with my fingers for the first line, the second line, the third line, fourth line, there's 16 bars in this piece and it's got a da capo. So really there's another additional eight bars. Um, the most difficult bars are the third and the fourth lines. I'm actually gonna start there instead of the first and second line, okay? So I'm gonna play that just a little bit. I'm gonna angle the camera onto the keys so you could see what I'm doing. I'm gonna take my hands and get in the right place. I know where my hand position is supposed to be. I know it's in the key of D. So I'm gonna figure out, just by playing just a little bit, decided that I know that this speed is good for me, but I don't think it's slow enough for my student. So I have to figure out what that tempo is. I think if I set the metronome at the quaver, it will be easier to understand. Aha! So I've got it set at 108. Each of these clicks is the quaver. Yeah, so actually the tempo would be 54. There's the crotchet. Pie, 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 apple pie. You know, you might say that's really, really slow, but actually we're gonna build that tempo very quickly. So I'm gonna put it back to that 108 that I had it. I'm gonna leave it there for now. And I'm gonna see how that feels. when we get to the quavers. And there's a stretch here. That's actually a good tempo to take. So I'm gonna make that my bass tempo at the bottom of this chart. I'm gonna put that as 108. And I'm gonna mark here quaver 
equals the tempo, okay? And we're gonna put the title pizzicato in D. So we know which tempo chart this is for because typically once a student starts using tempo charts, that I have several tempo charts. So there's several songs that they have. So we don't want to confuse the tempo markings we have set for one song to be for another song. So we're gonna title that to tempo chart for pizzicato in D. Sorry that it looks like a P, it's not a P. Pizzicato in D, the key of D major. And right now we don't know what that end quaver is gonna be, all right? But actually we want the quaver, the crotchet to get the beat, but we're probably going to be about 184 is what we're going to end up doing. 184 is the goal. All right. So 184. And we started off at 108. Okay. Now, if you don't want to do the calculations, I certainly can do them for you. That's not a problem. But I know on this chart, I have 22 blocks. So if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Oh, there's 23, okay? But there's going to be 22 steps to get there. We have a starting place, yeah? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 184 and subtract 108. And what do we get? Uh, my math is not all that great. So I'm going to use my calculator. Please don't laugh at my calculator. I will never lose this calculator. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna do 184 minus 108 equals 76. Now I said that I've got 22 spots to fill. So if I take that 76 and I divide it by 22, I've got approximately three and a half marks that's gonna go up every every. Uh, block. Okay. So if I do three marks on the first one and then four marks on the next, so I'm going to add three to 108. I get 111. If I add four to it, I get 115. Add three, 118. Add four, 122. Add three, 125. Add four, 129. Add three, 132, add 4, 136, add 3, 139, add 4, 143, add 3, 146, add 4, pardon me, add 4, 150, add 3, 153, add 4, 157, add 3, 160, add 4, 164, add 3, 167, add 4, 170, sorry, 171, add 3, 174, add 4, 178, add 3, 181, and look at that. We end up at 184, okay? So what does that mean now? Okay, so I've got my metronome markings set for the chart. So how, whatever metronome you use, whether it's an external metronome or it's one that's built into your keyboard or one that you use as an app, you're gonna set your first time going through at 108. Even if you do just a small section of the piece, that's fine. You could do the small section of the piece just one line if you want to work the tempo on that one line you know that's one line that you have difficulty with so i have my metronome marking at 108 is my lowest one that's where that's where lightning mcqueen is pointing right now okay we want lightning mcqueen to go all the way to the top of the chart yeah but we have to practice racing him up there okay so i've got my metronome mark i'm going to use my external okay so now I'm going to play that line. That's the quaver. One, two, ready, go. Pi, 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 apple. Pi, 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 apple, apple.
I made the connection as well. So I did bars 9 through 16, connecting it to the decapo back to bar number 1, okay? So Lightning McQueen is really solid there. What happens if I change him up to be 111? Well, this metronome doesn't have 111, so I'm going to have to set my keyboard, because I know my keyboard can go up in individual points one at a time, but it takes a little while to set it up. So I know my metronome is preset at 120. I definitely don't want that ding on there. So I've got to take the ding off. Taking the ding off. Okay, I'm not gonna get into how you do all of that because my keyboard is gonna be obviously different than others if you have a different keyboard, okay? But that 120 that it's preset is too fast. So I have to be able to change my metronome and that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna change it to 111. That's 111, okay? Because I programmed it to be that way. So now that's my quaver. I'm gonna go pi, 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 apple. Again, that was pretty solid because this is a pretty easy piece for me. But going up in these small chunks, now that's 111, that's really good. But what about moving it up to the next step? The next step on my chart says 115. So I'm going to change my tempo again. 115. Doesn't sound very different, but to your fingers it will make an impact. It will make a difference. I won't do the whole section again. I'm just going to do one line now. So that sounded pretty good. I'm going to change the tempo again. Meanwhile, I should be moving Lightning McQueen up because I've achieved that so far. <coughs> Pardon me. So I'm going to change my tempo because I did 115 just now. I'm going to do 118. I'm going to change my tempo. 118. Doesn't sound very different. That sounded really good. I've achieved that. Didn't make any mistakes. So I'm going to move it up to 118. I've achieved it. Next number is 122. Change my tempo. 122. Ever so slightly quicker. One, two, here I go. it for that. Okay, so I've done 122. Move up Lightning McQueen. The next number is 125. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change that to 125. Again, it doesn't feel like it's a significant change, but these baby steps do add up. One, two, here I go. so on and so forth. Okay, 125 sounds good. Don't skip any steps, no matter how easy it is. So don't think that, oh, I've got it. I can skip up to 143 now. <laughs> You'd be very surprised how quickly it will get away from you if you don't do these baby steps in order and one at a time. The process is so important. So now I'm going to change it to 129. 
one. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, guess what I just did? <laughs> I just turned off my keyboard. Right. All right, so that means that I have to reset my metronome because it went back to the ding, to the preset. I guess that's a good mistake to make so that you can see once again what I have to do to take care of that. I'm gonna take off the ding and I'm gonna change my metronome marking now. That's 120 that it's preset, but I have to now change it to 125. I'm gonna take that and go 125. So it's slightly faster. I count. One, two, here I go. Again, that sounded pretty good. So now I'm gonna make sure <coughs> that I put it up to 129. So metronome marking, 129 because that's what our calculation is. Now let's see if we can move Lightning McQueen up in a minute. One, two, here I go. Okay, so I'm starting to feel the pressure of the tempo building. I'm going to change it again to 132 is our next marking. 132. <clears throat> One, two, here I go. And that sounded pretty good. So Lightning McQueen can move up. Next marking is 136. I'm going to change my tempo. 136. Ah, that one I did hear a difference in that one. One, two, here I go. Sounded good again, so I'm going to move my Lightning McQueen up. Next tempo marking is 139. Change my tempo to 139. Oops, that went down. Oh, because I hit 130 instead of 139. Try that again. 139. Ah, did you hear the difference there? I'm going to do that again. Listen to the clicking. 130. 139. Yeah, there's a big difference in 10 marks, isn't it? So now I'm at 139. One, two, here I go. Okay, so 139 sounds good. We are halfway there up our metronome markings. Now, what happens if I make a mistake? I'm not going to move Lightning McQueen up if I make a mistake, because what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to practice it about three more times to make sure that it wasn't a mistake. It was just a stupid, silly mistake and not something that my fingers were used to playing. So you have to undo a mistake by playing it correctly at least three times in a row, okay? At any point, if we have to stop and practice it at that speed a few more times, that's perfectly normal, especially when we start getting to the upper numbers, okay? Now, just for the sake of argument, even though you're not supposed to do this, I'm gonna move it up here so you can see with a difference. I just did 139, I'm gonna to go to 167. It's almost 30 marks higher, isn't it? So I'm gonna take that, put my metronome on, I'm going to change it to 137, one, sorry, 167, metronome, 167. That's significantly faster. Remember, this is quavers. Pie, pie, apple pie. So I 
also made the connection so you can see we're coming to the end of the tempo chart now that was good so now i'm going to reset it to be 171 is the next number 171 slight change of tempo one two here i go so on and so forth. So 171 sounded good. We're almost there. 174 is the next tempo. 174. Here we go. One, two, here I go. I didn't make the connection right, and I played a wrong note in there, so I'm going to have to practice that again. going to move my tempo up just yet because I still have to practice that a few more times to make sure that I don't make that mistake again. so on and so forth. I'm happy with that, so I am going to move it up to 174. I have achieved that now. Only three more to go to get to that 184, but I'm going to go to 178 first. 178. Okay. One, two, here I go. notice my staccato quavers go right along with that metronome very precise with it and this is the beauty of building the tempo your precision gets even more and more accurate okay so that's 178 i'm happy with that i'm going to move lightning mcqueen up my next tempo is 181 181. Oh dear. We're almost there. I play. One, two, here I go. I felt no moment of panic, no worries at all. The connection was solid. Guess what? I've achieved 181. Okay, we are now at the top, the very, very final one. 184, metronome marking change, 184. Hopefully we can get through it. One, two, here I go.
you hear a moment of hesitation? Do you know why that was? That, me that hesitation came because part of the metronome building the tempo, we did not do the first two lines. So we didn't put the work into those first two lines as we did in the last two lines. So that's why the last two lines were absolutely precise because the work went into it, but I didn't use the tempo building chart for the first two lines. So you might need to go back and even if you need to spot check, skip a couple of steps in the easier part, that's quite okay. But for the most difficult part, you have to discern, decide where in the music is the most difficult part and apply this tempo chart process. And I guarantee you, you're gonna build your accuracy I guarantee you it's going to make a whole lot more sense. Your fingers will learn the routine that they need to play. Because remember, your eyes see it, your brain thinks it, sends a message to your fingers to do the action, and your ears hear it. And all four steps have to be on board in precisely the same place. Okay. If your eyes are working ahead and they're busy looking at your fingers, guess what's going to happen? brain isn't going to know what to tell the fingers to play and there's going to be all kinds of mistakes. Ears aren't going to hear it right and it's going to be a mess. So we got to slow it down, let the process take hold, build the tempo slowly and then you've got it. All right now let's see if I can do the whole piece from beginning to end at 184. So I'll set my metronome, the smaller metronome which I've got, 184. Actually, I'm going to set it to half the speed because I don't need the quavers counted out for me now. So I'm going to set it at 92. So now this is the crotchet. Pie, pie, apple pie. One, two, here I go. connection wasn't good okay so I'm going to take that ending and I'm going to do that from here where do I go I'm going to practice that ending and that connection one more time one two here I go I didn't do that right, so that was a wrong connection. I'm going to practice that connection again. One more time with that connection. Last time with the connection. Make sure it's solid. Ready? Here I go. problem is I'm reaching with two for the connection so I need to make sure that I get the right finger landed three one three move three okay I'm going to practice that again three one three move three I was trying to put two on the D when I moved and that wasn't right gotta move the three the three just finished playing move the three now I've got it, all right? So I'm going to practice both hands together. And there it is. It's making the conscious decision, engaging the brain to make sure we're doing the right fingers at the right time with the right rhythms. One, two, here I go.
Now I felt a little hesitation in that second line. So maybe what I need to do is slow it down a little bit. I've slowed it down to 76 as the crotchet. I'm gonna practice that second line. One, two, here I go. Crank it up a notch. One, two, here I go. One more time, crank it up a notch. I'm getting closer to my 96. One, two, here I go. Oops, wrong note. because I don't feel comfortable with that yet. One, two, here I go. I just realized what the problem was. It wasn't that I was playing the wrong notes. It felt strange because sometimes, I'm gonna set, shut this off for a minute. Sometimes that middle note is played with the three but sometimes it's played with the two. Here it was played. Here it's one. Yeah, but. So that's what the difference is. One, two, one, five, five, two, one, or five, three, one. To remember which finger has to be played and how it's going to feel. Here it's two and then it's two again. Now that time the right hand was wrong. I'm going to fix that. So we've got three in the middle there. Again, my fingering wasn't quite right in the right hand because I was focusing on the left hand. But I'm going to put my metronome back on so I don't have to think about the beat. One, two, ready, go. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to put my metronome up just a little bit. I'm almost at that 96. One, two, here I go. Oops, wrong note. Again, three, three, one, three, five. One, two, here I go. Yeah, I'm going to do that one more time with the three in the middle this time. I'm at, what's it say, 88? Oh, here we go. There's that 92, that magic number, because 92 is half of 184, which is what we got to Lightning McQueen to. One, two, here I go. That felt pretty good. I'm going to do that line one more time. So I think we've got all the building blocks in place now. So what I want to do is see if I can do the entire song from beginning to end with the tocapo, all the connections at the proper speed. Here we go. One, two, ready, go.
and there it is. So that is how you use a tempo chart and the metronome as your tools to help build the tempo of a song that you've already learned the letter names, finger numbers, and rhythms. The song is called Pizzicato in D by Willard Palmer, and it's from the Alfred's Basic Piano Series Prep Course Solo Book Level F. I hope that this has been something that can be helpful to apply to other pieces that you're learning how to play. And feel free to message or comment and let me know. Um, I'll put my email and uh, contact details in the, the, um, um, in the description. So if you have any questions, then please do get in contact. I hope that I can help you learn piano and discover the musician that's in you. Thank you.